George Russell's Lydian chromatic concept proposes a way of understanding how tonality, the orientation of a piece of music around a particular tone, is conveyed through vertical and horizontal elements of pitch in the 12-tone system of equal temperament. Russell extends the common view that a chord conveys tonality vertically, while a scale conveys tonality horizontally. The Lydian concept makes us conscious of tonal gravity. Uh, there are essentially two kinds of tonal gravity. Vertical, that is tonal gravity inferred by the chord, where the chord infers the tonic, and horizontal tonal gravity, tonal gravity inferred by the scale, for instance, a blues scale. I know you have a couple of records. I don't know which illustrates which, so you better say. Well, there are certainly two uh, major jazz artists who have these contrasting styles. Coleman Hawkins, for instance, is essentially a vertical, uh, vertically minded uh, uh, soloist. That is, his, his, his melody is dictated by the chord. Mm -hmm. I would better hear it. <laughs> Mr. Young, on the other hand, is uh, more horizontally minded, uh, more scale minded. He imposes a scale on a sequence of chords. <laughs> Russell asserts that every chord is understood to have a scale which best conveys that chord's tonality. In the concept system of vertical polymodality, a spectrum of alternative scales for each chord is explored which gradually moves towards total chromatism, the inclusion of all 12 pitches. In the system of horizontal polymodality, the same spectrum is available, but in the context of a tonic defined by a local or regional key area, tonic station, rather than by the passing of individual chords. Through tests, illustrations and transcriptions, Russell's major treste, the Lydian chromatic concept of tonal organisation, explores many potential uses of the two approaches to tonality for the jazz improviser or composer. In the ten years leading up to the first edition of this work, in 1953, Russell first worked as a jazz drummer and then big band arranger. Ultimately, as a composer during 1947-49, Russell wrote several striking original and challenging pieces for jazz orchestra that combine elements of jazz, Afro-Cuban music and European modernism after Igor Skrivinsky. These first major works were extremely challenging for the musicians and listeners, so much so the music had trouble finding audiences. Dizzy Gillespie's orchestra recorded the suite Cubana B, Cubana Bop and premiered it in Carnegie Hall as a major work of modern jazz in 1947. The 1949 A Bird in Igor's Yard, Bird being Charlie Parker, Igor being Stravinsky, was not released until years after Buddy DeFranco Orchestra recorded it. As the popular era of big band jazz was coming to a close, these orchestras were not able to continue championing these large-scale concert works, and without commissions, Russell stopped writing them. Even in this early period, Russell was delving into complex chords and scales, but the concept as we know it today was not formed until Russell stepped back from his composing activities in 1950, to dedicate himself to the task of finishing the Lydia chromatic concept. For jazz musicians, a chord symbol implies more than just the root, third, fifth and seventh. Its ninth and potentially other chord members are implied as well. Instead of considering the extended harmonies common in jazz as stacks of thirds, musicians often describe harmony in a more linear fashion, using a scale to stand in for a chord symbol. What is often called chord scale theory is a major part of jazz pedagogy. 
and cannot be ignored as we try to approach a general theory of jazz harmony. The ultimate origin of chord scale theory is George Russell's lydiochromatic concept. The influence of the concept, as is often called, is difficult to overstate. However, despite its importance to jazz theory, Russell's work has not received much attention in musical theoretical scholarship on jazz. There may be many reasons for this. Russell's serpentine and hard-to-follow prose are probably not least among them. Russell's central insight, indeed the concept itself, is that the Lydian scale rather than the major scale serves a fundamental role in equal-tempered music. He offers many explanations, but this central idea we can demonstrate by what he himself says. Sound both of the following chords separately. Try to detect the one which sounds a greater degree of unity and finality with its tonical C major triad. In test performs over the years in various parts of the world, the majority of people have repeatedly chosen the second chord, the C Lydian scale, in its Terratian order. To understand why Russell so admired the Lydian scale, it may be useful for me to try to debunk this criticism from someone called Oakleaf. It is not the purpose of this video to defend Russell, but is itself a critical review. However, my research has shown that Russell is being constantly attacked on one particular point that is not even his main argument, but simply what he wrote as a footnote. Let's go back to the beginning. Oakwood states we should read Jeff Brent's article debunking Russell. Well, let's take a look. Brent spends a lot of time explaining how a mere footnote in Russell's book is wrong. He takes us into different tunes to show that the note F sharp in a C Lydian scale is not really represented by the harmonic series. However, he fails to notice that there is actually a simpler way to criticise Russell. If we look at the harmonic series, the flat 7 appears before the major 7th. So if we take Russell's footnote seriously, then the C Lydian scale should have a B flat in there, making it a dominant chord with a sharp 11, very unstable. Oakwood then misquotes Russell, insisting that the Lydiochromatic concept states that the word die in diatonic is from the Greek meaning two, but in actuality it states the die in Latin meaning two. Brent quotes Russell correctly, but his understanding of the Greek meaning of the word diatonic is dubious and really irrelevant because Russell is not stating anything about ancient Greece. The word diatonic in ancient Greek is based on a mode that appeared on the seven string lyre. All seven strings on a lyre were controlled by one tuning peg, therefore the mode was determined by the length of the strings. Each string of the lyre was thought to echo one of the seven planets, the sun being the middle string or keynote merse, of the mode, the moon net, at the top spring and Cronus satin at the lowest string. The modes were built on two tetrachords, meaning tone sequences built between the intervals of a fourth. One tetrachord descended a fourth from the keynote and one ascended, making a heptonic or seven note scale. Three types of modes were possible, diatonic, chromatic and enharmonic. However, it is unknown how these modes were constructed, as we do not have sufficient information to reconstruct them accurately. Further, the Greeks used microtones, not in our modern scales, and no ancient sources that define the modes agree with each other. The 16th century theorist Zarlino, writing on the modes, concludes, It is really very difficult to have a clear and perfect knowledge of the usage of the ancients, because it cannot be demonstrated in any way, this usage being so totally extinguished that we cannot find any vestige of it. This is how I see it. Russell's theory does not overstate the harmonic series notes or tones as the be-all and end-all of the Lydian scale, but he does regard the early intervals between them as important. To Russell, the perfect fifth, which appears early in the harmonic series, is the most fundamental interval after the octave and unison, which are just the same notes sounded different ways. To Russell, the perfect fifth is the interval that best demonstrates tonal gravity. Look at these two notes. Which note would you say belongs as the tonic or key note? You may say C should be at the bottom and F at the top. However, Russell would disagree with you. 
To him, the note that should appear at the bottom is clearly the F. This is because the fundamental interval of a fifth wants to fall, so C wants to fall to F in the same way that D minor wants to progress to G7 and G7 wants to progress to C. So Russell, accepting this principle, extends this idea up through perfect fifths until he makes a seven note chord that spells the same notes of the Lydian scale. This resultant chord is to Russell how music should have been conceived and the major scale that contains both C and F is simply a wrong choice because it is being at odds with itself having dual tonic function, i.e. the F and C. The C is always wanting to fall to the F. When Russell extends the fifth beyond the seventh note, a problem appears. In F Lydian, the eighth in perfect fifth series is the note F sharp. However, this note creates a second Lydian scale between the notes C and F sharp. Russell believes that the Lydian scale is perfect because it does not have a dual tonic. The Lydian tonic as the musical sunstar is the seminal source of tonal gravity. So to create a scale with two Lydian tonics is bad news to Russell. So what does he do? Moves that particular pitch to the end of the chromatic scale as number 12th note. Now it can be seen that the new eighth resolves by a half step to number two to one. The ninth, which Russell considers more outgoing or dissonant in relation to the tonic, resolves by a half step to three to two to one, and the even more outgoing tenth by a half step to four to three to one, the eleventh by a half step to four to three to two to one, etc. The new 12th note is seen as more of an avoid note in relation to the Lydian tonic because it would have a tendency to create two or more Lydian tonics. This justifies its position as number 12 or most outgoing tone. This scale is now called a Lydian parent scale, that is, it is the parent of the chords that can be formed from it. The Lydian scale is also unique in that it is possible to form all 12 interval types with the tonic. Note that in the major scale, the interval of an augmented fourth cannot be produced from the major tonic as it can in the Lydian scale. The nearest to the C tonic in this example is the fourth F of the scale, which must be used as the bass note. I'm going to leave off here now, and in part three we will discuss the formation of various scales. See you then.